This evening is April 16, 2024. It is now 7 o'clock p.m. and I'd like to call this meeting off order. Nancy, would you please read the sunshine notice? Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of the 2024 meeting dates was published in the Courier News and Burnsville News on December 14, 2023 and posted at the Municipal Complex and the Borough Library. Action may be taken. Would everyone please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We deference these proceedings. We're going to ask everyone to please uh, silence your cell phone. It's high and limited. start off tonight with a public comment session on non-agenda items. So at this point, you're welcome to approach the microphone and address the council on items. We need to roll call. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you, Nancy. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Murphy? Here. Councilman Silva? Here. Councilwoman Sueda? Here. Council President Sweeney? Here. Councilwoman Weibel? Here. Mayor Corleano? Here. Uh, we're going to start out with public comments on non-agenda items only. Okay, it is the policy. These, uh, these uh, not when you, when you, if you approach the microphone and you wish to have a comment for council, you're limited to three minutes per person. You will have the opportunity to speak once. When you would approach the microphone, I would ask you to please uh, slowly, for the record, state your full name, your address, and the town in which you live. Um, Comments may be made on any non-agenda subject pertaining to borough issues. Um, comments pertaining to public hearings are saved for that section of the agenda, which is afterwards. No debating between residents, please. And your comments should be addressed to the mayor and council up here. Um, for those here tonight to come in on our lease issue, this is the section of our meeting where we would ask you to make your comments. Comments on the geese issue will not be entertained at the end of the meeting because they are uh, not on our agenda tonight. We are a civil and courteous council, okay? Um, and we would appreciate your all being the same. I, we understand people have their have passions and, and causes and we respect that immensely, uh, but incivility in this room will not be tolerated. I just wanted to say that. So, um, having said that, yeah. Would anybody like to address the council? Do we just want one? Yes, uh, yeah, you're welcome to start. And then if, uh, you can go first, you can go first, and then second. One person at a time. One person at a time. Uh, good evening. I'm with the Animal Protection League of New Jersey and the League of Humane Voters of New Jersey. Okay, so my, yeah. Need your name and address. Yes. My name is Doris Lynn. I live in Freehold Township at Two Legend Hollow Court. Um, a little bit about my background. I have a degree in applied biological sciences from MIT. I worked for the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection and the US EPA. I then went to law school. I am now the in-house counsel for Animal Protection League of New Jersey and the League of Humane Voters of New Jersey. And I'm the author of the Wildlife Protection Chapter in the New Jersey Environmental Law Handbook. We are here because, um, Doreen and I, <laughs> are here uh, because killing geese is an ineffective and cruel response to the issue. Killing is ineffective because as long as you have water and geese preferred vegetation, you will continue attracting geese even after this group of geese killed. There are many non-lethal cutting edge technologies avail sorry, available to deter the geese. Habitat modification using riparian buffers and meadows are the number one solutions to permanently deter the geese. We know you are aware of this method. One ecological landscape designer said the planting of the riparian buffers is, is not dense enough to deter the geese. The choice of plants, especially white azaleas, do not work in a riparian buffer. 
The Kentucky bluegrass has not been replaced. This is a welcome map for the geese. If the proper changes are implemented, the geese would move out of the park and lethal methods could be avoided. A few other non-lethal solutions are flight turf, robin radar, sonic net, flock free sprays, hawk sonic system, bird control laser broadcast system. We are having great success in New Jersey with towns and entities implementing these solutions. We are available for a site visit and or presentation with our ecological landscape designer to discuss your best option. Killing should never be on the table in the 21st century. Residents are outraged that the mayor and council voted to gas the geese. We hope you will reconsider your decision to use ineffective lethal methods and give Animal Protection League of New Jersey a chance to help address the riparian buffer issue with effective, non-lethal solutions that last year after year and are a win-win for the town and the geese. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Excellent, please. Doreen Frager, Salisbrook, New Jersey, Special Projects Director with Animal Protection League of New Jersey. Um, so I just want, I brought a packet of information that I would like to leave. Um, I also brought an example of a riparian buffer that has been done in Avon by the sea, and they have no more geese problems. So as you can see, the width is pretty dense, so it keeps out the geese. And I brought some other information about sprays and overseeding the grass to get rid of the Kentucky bluegrass with flight turf. We have our habitat modification brochure. Um, this is like a wealth of information. I'm sure that you might have researched a couple of things, but I just wanted to give you this information because we would love to come out and do a site visit and help with any of your concerns. Um, look at what you have done already, try to help, try to improve, try to add to it so that you have no more of these problems. And I would just like to leave this packet with you tonight. Should I bring it over there? Please give it to our uh, administrator. You need to look at that in our Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I want to just scan all that and email it to us by tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your time. No, thank you. My name is Barry Braun. I live at 63 Main Street in DPAC. Um, I'd like to say thank you first for providing this opportunity to speak. As you can probably tell already, I'm not a public speaker. I'm just a resident, um, a lifelong resident of both Mendham and TPAC. Um, beginning in 2009, uh, I began a decade-long battle with Lyme disease. Uh, for about half that time, I was completely disabled. Um, as I recovered, one of the things I did was go walking to Liberty Park. Um, it may not sound like much, but that was just a monumental accomplishment for me at the time, considering what I had gone through to that point. Uh, Liberty Park then, and still is to me, very important, not simply for the trees and the water, but for the life there. It's a hub of life. And when I was recovering, I would sit and I'd watch the ducks and the geese, and I began to have a newfound uh, appreciation for just life in general. As I progressed with my treatment and my health and I started to get well, I started to think about how all living beings, we're all bonded together in this life. It helped me, I no longer thought, why me in terms of my illness, I knew why. The life in and around Liberty Park was going through the same thing I went through, just through my eyes. And as I recovered, their lives went on, as did mine. But we will forever share that bond. Um, thank you again for this opportunity. Um, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. My name is Jacqueline Braun. That's my brother Barry. We're homeowners at 63 Main Street for 17 years. My brother and I are business owners. My fiance lives with us and commutes to the Bronx every day. We're good hearted moral people. When I had read about this in the Burnersville News about the geese, all three of our stomachs dropped. We would urge you to reconsider and listen to different options rather than gassing and killing. I have been
nothing. I knew nothing about geeks before this, so I did a crash course this past month in it. And to do the roundup, you will be gassing eight-week-old fledglings. They cannot fly, nor can their parents, because they have molted at that point. They have no defense mechanism, and they will be gassed with carbon dioxide, and it takes 15 minutes for them to die. They become hunger-starved, and they will suffer. I urge you to please reconsider listening to different options. We love this town, we love the wildlife, and there is an option other than euthanize. Thank you for letting us talk. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Who would like to see the Thanks. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Jonas. I live at 7 Franklin Court in Burnersville, New Jersey. Uh, I'm a local, and I just want to say that I also was disturbed to hear about the gas and geese. I'd really like you to, um, to reconsider killing them and consider the APLMJ generous offer to help you with the lethal message. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Ken Jonan. I'm from Seven Franklin Court in Bernardsville. And I just want to say I'm against the gassing of the geese. And I just want to ask you to, uh, if you could work with the Animal Protection League to find a non lethal solution, uh, that'd be really great. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Ann. Goldberg. I live at 39-25 Knott Terrace in Fairlawn, and I'm here to just express my hope that you will not uh, gas the geese, but instead use non-lethal methods and work with the Animal Protection League of New Jersey. I have personally seen how habitat modification totally keeps the geese away. And I thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Valerie Devine. I live in Lake Hiawatha, which is part of uh, Persephone. My address is 79 Norman Avenue, Lake Hiawatha. Uh, I just want to say um, that I hope you make the decision to, to work with the Animal Protection League and to, to do something other than to, to, geese the, uh, to, to uh, gas the geese. Um, I, I've seen them, and uh, you know I just want them to be protected and please to not be killed. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Next, please. Hi, I'm Lynn, L-Y-N-N, Terry, P-E-R-R-Y, and I live at 59 Main Street, right here in Peapack. Um, I honestly was appalled when I found out that this plan was being put in place. Um, I love Liberty Park. I love the animals that are there. I've never found the geese to be a nuisance, even now when they're being protective of their nests and their mates. They're still very calm, just give them a light birth and they're fine. Um, and honestly, as a person of faith, I believe that we should care for all of God's creatures. Uh, we're not here to, unfortunately, the word dominion has really been misconstrued, in my opinion. Um, we're here to live with, with them, side by side with them, and to care for them, and be good stewards of the creation that God has given us, and that includes all creatures, great and small. Thank you. Next, please. Oh, done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Gail Kopp, K O P P, and I live at 125 Colt Lane, Blackstone, and I have a one acre pond on my property. And we feel your feelings with regards to the goose 
And so what we have come up with that seems to work is we have a guide with a rake, and he helps us out with that. But an interesting observation that we've had over the years, we've been here 15 years, um, that usually one pair, it's a smaller rake than what is the uh, one pair will choose to stay and bring up babies, and they will chase away all the other geese. So we've had very good luck over the years doing that. So, of course, I'm on the team of there are lots of non-lethal ways of handling them. And plus, um, it would be relatively ineffective to kill this group of geese because you'd have to kill the next group of geese. They just, there's lots of geese in the area. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your comments. Next, please. Gregory Skinner, 20 Parker Road, Gladstone. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, it's amazing to see a lot of people come to a council meeting. Having been up there, there's usually nobody in the audience. So thank you all for coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> just a couple comments. Um, I know it's a tough decision that you came up with. Um, I, I, we've been wrestling with this. The we as in the borough has been, have been wrestling with this issue for um, going back probably 10 years, if not longer. So certainly longer than when I was on the council and way before that. Um, we've tried just about every method we've tried. You know, we had an expert design the ratification of the, uh, the new um, redoing the pond with buffers and things, plant life and everything else. We've tried uh, the geese police. It's a, a, a company that came in. Uh, we've had uh, companies come in with dogs to get the geese away, not to attack them, but to try to keep them away. Um, we put predator animal statues up around the pond. Um, we put wire fencing, which they recommend. We put geese repellent, which uh, three years ago we had a company come in to put geese repellent. And we, there's even orange strobe lights, which experts said. Unfortunately, none of that has worked. Um, and so I, I guess it's the, the council has sort of gotten into a point where we've got to do something. Uh, when you do walk around, it's, it's a mess. and. You know, geese are known to defecate 15 to 20 times a day. There's a lot of geese there. Uh, it pollutes the water. Um, it's, so it's not like they have, you haven't tried. Uh, you've tried everything or you've tried a ton of measures and it hasn't worked. So uh, nobody wants to get to this point, but unfortunately I know you feel like it, you have no other choice. So um, it's a tough decision, I get it. Um, and you know, uh, hopefully, Somehow we can get rid of the geese, but unfortunately that's, you know, I mean, come to that point where we've used a ton of methods before and it hasn't worked. So, thank you. Next. Good evening, Ruth Williams, Highland Avenue, Peacock. Um, I second what Greg Skinner has said. It's a very difficult decision that's 10 years in the making. Um, as someone who regularly uses the park. My husband runs every day in the park. It's really um, a situation that doesn't seem to have a solution. And I think the number of geese and the activities of the geese has genuinely interfered with our quality of life as residents. Um, I certainly appreciate all of the sentiment that's been expressed here on behalf of animals. I don't think anyone thinks um, that a good thing to have to euthanize geese, but I think it's gotten to the point where it's really interfered with the ability of the residents to enjoy the park. Um, and as I listen to people here, um, people from Eagle Township, Saddlebrook, Bernardsville, Fairlong, Lake Hiawatha, um, you know, only a handful of people from Keepak Gladstone, who are constituents, came to protest this decision. I think respect this decision. You may not like it on humanitarian level, but they respect this decision as do I. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Park has been a very important part of my life, my mother's life, uh, rest her soul. 
Um, I understand the difficult situation, uh, the difficult <coughs> decisions. I think um, the lady said presents a very nice option, and I really request that, that the council look into that. Um, the fact that um, there may not be other people here, I mean, I, I do see a lot of people, and, and, and having been to a lot of municipal buildings, this is a full house. Um, so I would request that the board consider, that the council consider the options. Um, I echo um, one of the one of the um, uh, one of the ladies who spoke. They are God's creatures, and we are supposed to be taking care of them. And the fact that people can't maybe run in the in the park and get and get um, um, duty on their feet, you know, we're talking about a life here, okay? And and I think that if somebody doesn't, you know. Uh, uh, Let's clean up the poop, you know, or get your little booties to wear if, if you're that averse to um, being around goose poop. And um, I, I really am a, a big supporter of natural um, foliage, and I, I work um, with a number of different environmental consultants, and that's part of what part of what the natural landscape is supposed to do is work with work, work with the, um, the animals and. Um, I appreciate you listening to me, and I will try to get back to my seat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Who else would like to address the Please. Hi, I'm Bonnie Tristini from PPAC. I live on Ramapo Way. I'm not here about uh, the geese. We have tennis courts, and I greatly appreciate the fact that we have them now. However, they're in horrendous condition, and I understand the cost of redoing them. Could we at least put up new nets um, until a decision is made? Because uh, yes, we can. That, yeah. Okay. Uh, That's all. To address the tennis courts, we know we have problems with tennis courts. Uh, we we have allocated in our capital budget, the million of tennis courts to either add to an existing location or perhaps even moving into a more suitable location. Okay. Um, they are breaking up and it's a water drainage issue that exists underneath them that's just causing we if we actually are going to break up again. So we need to consider some alternate options. I think Eric Cartello is pushing with us kind of property chair. Okay. But I would ask the second on property to second Right. You want? Can you please bring it to Eric? So we had a resident address that. Oh, great, and, Eric, and, and then bring it to the Eric to Brad to get you the next up on that. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Hi. Good evening. Mike Coppice, 25 Little Lab at PPAC. Um, I'm here to support your, the council's decision to euthanize the geese. Um, I recall you started talking about it last fall after having tried many other things when the park reopened um, and just voted on it a couple meetings ago. And I think it was a good decision, a very difficult one. I know uh, from veterinarian and everybody else, it's, it's not something that's come out lately. Um, I want to remind people we talk about the park, but there's other areas of the town. We see the geese creating up to the municipal building, they're up and down Little Avenue. We've seen them all the way up as far as the field on the other side of our house. And they just they make a mess no matter where they go um euthanization is not an easy decision but i think after hearing everything the council's tried over them seeing things you've tried over the last 10 years it's something that um, I, I support your decision and i know my wife does as well um, so i would ask that the council could, uh, continue on with the craft they've chosen thank you mr officer I, excuse me, my name is Pete Engelman. I live on Hillcrest Avenue in Gladstone. It's a very, very hard decision. There's a lot of folks here that really feel strongly about it. I don't know, I've been just Googling about geese. And between global warming and then nesting longer and not going as migrating as soon, um, the, the amount of poop that geese put out is unbelievable. There are so many toxins in goose poop. You know, E. coli, 
salmonella, a whole bunch of things I can never even pronounce that are just wicked. And, um, you know, dogs like to experience things with their tongues. Little children are especially vulnerable to goose poop and other things because they have immune systems that are developing. And so, you know, we definitely need to get rid of the goose poop. It's a tough job to do. The park is not really usable the way we would like to use it. You can't have an Easter egg hunt there. You'll have an epidemic. And, um, you know, the water's getting fouled and it's, there's poop all over the benches. And something needs to be done. Um, <clears throat> maybe the geese shouldn't trump our, I said that, maybe the geese shouldn't <laughs> trump our children and um, our pets our coveted feral cat, you know, population, you know, they're all down there with the goose poop and it's, there's a lot of problems with it. And so, um, that's all I got to say. Next person. Simpson, 53 Mendham Road, Glasgow. Uh, I am a little late, sorry, I had something to do. Um, so I did have a couple of questions. I've been in the park almost every day for the last six to eight weeks, as long as it wasn't raining, and it doesn't seem too bad in there uh, lately. It's, in fact, it's quite clean. Is that the DPW's job, or are there less geese? It's a lot of rain. DPW does go in there and clean up a bit. Um, and kind of in the period kind of before nesting, they do wander a bit more throughout town. They're less focused on staying right by the water. Um, so they're a little bit more spread out. Um, but is that, really, is that seasonal? Well, typically once they nest, they stay closer. And then of course, once they get closer to molting, then they stay by the water. They don't be in the water at night. Um, but I, I think it's a lot of rain as well. A lot of rain? A lot of rain washes and poop away. Okay. That helps. Uh, so there also seems to be far less geese. Well, um, it doesn't. It, so we have about 25 to 30 resident Canada geese. Um, and I think it fluctuates a bit with some that are passing through. Uh, but the USDA came out to do a count, and that's that was their count. And that, you know, I'm, I'm in town walking a bit, and I, you know, that's the count that I get is somewhere in the 20 to 30 range is what I've been seeing lately. I mean, I've had other people say they think it's more, but that's that's the number that I that I've been seeing. And we feel as though it'll be how long before a new crew moves in. So speaking with the USDA, um, basically what they said is once this group of geese are are um, are deceased and not, and not the park, we do have to maintain this deterrence, right? The deterrence that we've already been doing. So uh, we keep the flashing lights. Um, they flash all day and night, which disturbs their sleep patterns. Um, well, just, to, just as an aside, the geese that are there, they just tolerate it. Once a, a Canada goose is a resident in an area, they're quite tolerant of some of these deterrents. So but we maintain those that would help decrease, decrease the likelihood of new geese coming in. We, and we're going to spray, continue to spray. And I'm if, sorry, spray what? So it's like an organ. It's like basically a, a goose repellent. It's a it's an organic material that has a kind of an odor that they don't like. Um, we did try that for, for a couple of years, and that didn't work um, for the residents. But the USDA does say that if we continue with these deterrents, it's very unlikely that they'll come back. And if we do get a goose or two come back, they recommended getting the geese police, the dogs, come out right away. Um, and then once these geese are gone. The idea is to go back in and repair the repairing buffer, which these geese kind of destroyed after it was planted. So, um, you know, the, the image that you showed, George, uh, you know, that's lovely, you know, a, a nice deep repairing buffer. This is a, a little suburban park. We're unable to do a 50 foot repairing buffer, uh, but we do want to do um, as much of a buffer as we can with the space that, that, that we have. So, we're going to replant some of the plants. Um, you know, do our due diligence, find out the best way to put some grasses along there. On the one side, some of those grasses did survive, but on the, on the far side, you're still on the far side, some of them, but we need some, you know, because you need height. A, a repairing buffer at minimum has to be two or three feet high. So um, those plants were eaten by the geese. It's two times over. 
And we put lily pads in the in the in the pond as well to keep the <coughs> surface area, so they would be a little deterred from landing. And those all died because there's really high phosphorus and nitrogen levels in the in the pond from the from the east. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad that I'm not up there having to vote. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to speak next? Only once. Okay. One time only. Sorry. Going twice, please. Okay. <coughs> Hi, I'm Stacey Andrus. I own 88 Main Street. Um, I was thinking about this coming over here. I've lived in this area for 45 years. I can live anywhere I want. This is a, this is, a, if you want to move to Chatham, if you want to move to Madison, if you want to have little parks with swings and you're concerned about your babies stepping in goose shit, which I did, sorry, <laughs> which I did my entire life. Um, <laughs> And you're concerned about that kind of thing. There's Chatham, there's Madison, there's Short Hills, there's lots of suburban areas. This is the countryside. You are talking, I'm a passionate animal lover. I'm responsible for neutering a number of the cats that are here. I think it is shameful that anybody claiming to be in any kind of an animal welfare position of any kind would even dream of this. My one point. My second point, or going back, I should say, to my first point, this is the countryside. You are, you are talking about not only the condition and the concern for the animals, but you're also talking about the culture of this area. We already have developers breathing down our necks and already moving in. This is not, I, mean, I don't have property here, and I don't think most people live here because they want to be in a particularly pristine Central Park kind of setting. When I was approached, and people had mentioned this whole thing about this geese issue, my response was, what geese, what goose issue? What are you talking about? That's not a park where, you know, Easter egg hunts, come on. That is not a park where people are, I don't know, meeting for Tai Chi, nor is it going to be <laughs> when you, if you do anything to the geese. That's not the true culture of this area. And if it's the culture that you want, you are totally rewriting this area and what this is about and what this, this town is about. Peapack, Gladstone, Bedminster, Far Hills, Oldwick, any of these places. If you want the suburbs, move to the suburbs. If you want a park where kids can have Easter egg hunts and swing on swings and they're never going to step in goose poo, good luck. Morristown Green is available. There's a lot of beautiful houses there. I don't. I just don't even know where this is coming from. I find the whole thing horrifying, and I think it's utterly shameful that anybody claiming to be in the animal welfare world or loving animals or concerned, and this whole thing about oh, it's been a difficult thing to consider, and da, da, da. it's not that difficult, y'all. Don't kill animals unnecessarily. Learn to live with them. Welcome to the world. Right? This is I have coyotes everywhere. I have I have a giant horse seconds. farm. I'm sorry? I have a giant horse farm. I have chickens. I have cats. I don't want my animals killed. I don't want my animals getting sick. I don't want to get sick. <clears throat> but welcome, welcome to planet Earth. This is it's absurd. It is embarrassing and shameful, and I'm like stunned at this, frankly, what I consider utter stupidity of this whole thing. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, I'll try again. Last chance of this day, we have somebody else. Two people. Two people. Hi, I'm Camille DiCarlo, 353 North Rochester. My husband and his family have been in this general area for over 60 years. And I know originally that pond had very large swans. Was there ever an issue with those swans? I mean, they're larger, they're more aggressive. They poop bigger. So I'm just curious, was there ever anything like this to kill the swans? I'm curious. We never killed the swans. Oh. The park was renovated. The swans were given away. 
and as you might have noticed, they have not been replaced because of yeah. similar issues. Yeah, I was just curious to know if that was a big issue previous to the It was an issue. Yeah. And if I understood correctly, there were people that stood up, yourselves included, said, you've been doing this for 10 years trying to get rid of the keys. You've done many, many different things. I was actually very surprised all the things you did, quite, fr actually, quite frankly. to clarify, I've been around, I've been in town for 25 years, mm -hmm. and I've been up in, in this program my, my 18th year up here. It's been an issue for 20 years. Mm -hmm. so they, I think they, they, what was described before, all the sort of the, the, the DPW super, mm -hmm. uh, it was fighting, uh, about three supers ago, was was fighting the battle in the early 2000s. So I commend you for trying for 10 years. And if I understood some of the, the residents or people here, they they said, you know, you know, it's been great that you've done that, but you've admitted it hasn't worked. Correct? Am I, am I wrong in knowing that? It hasn't worked. The things that you've been implementing hasn't worked. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought a little bit interesting. So my my question to you is that if your methods didn't work, but you said minutes ago that you were going to start implementing those methods again, my question is is why won't you let the um, you know the EPA or the people that are offering the olive branch to you to help you with different methods. I mean, it just makes sense. And if anybody was listening, you were offered some different solutions. And I just feel it's it's just only right to to work with them to, to see a better solution than killing them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mark Engelbretson, 35, Main Street and Peabac. Uh, we've been, my wife and I have been residents for over 35 years, raised four kids. And I do remember when the park was in a condition where you could actually put a blanket down and have a picnic with your children. So as hard as all of this is, and I have animals as well, I do know that I put my kids before the animals when there's a problem. And I think you know, a very difficult decision, but I'd like to see that park be used the ways it used to be. A while ago, when I raised my kids. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? Please, sir. I'm not a resident of Feedback Glass, so am I still allowed to comment? <laughs> uh, yes, as long as you have your full name. Thank you for the help out of the um, I've lived in this. Area, Somerset Hills, since 1951. I'm giving away my age. Um, even though we don't live in this town, we frequent Feedback Gladstone and park in this whole area. And many of the people here tonight have commented on one of why people live around here and that type of thing. We frequent the park very often, and I only have just three comments, and I will keep it brief. The first is, I just find the method that you are proposing to go about getting rid of these keys to be rather important. Considering there are other ways to do it, uh, this is effectively like, like a gas chamber. Uh, it's not a, a rapid death, it's a painful death. And the second part is, I don't really think anybody can realistically expect that if you eliminate this flock of geese that others will show up again. I, I mean, I, I just find that incredulous to think that geese are going to come back to a pond again. And I mean, is this just going to be a perpetual thing where you wait a few years, round them up? I, I just don't think it's really going to get anything done. Um, so I mean, those are, those are my comments. Um, I, I just think, I understand people's comments about not being able to use the park, uh, but, but I just think there's better ways to go about this. If you wanted to try to remove, there are other more humane ways to do it. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else wish to comment? Okay, I'll try again. Going once. Sorry. Going twice. <laughs> Last chance. Okay. Public comment portion is closed on non agenda items. I'd like to take a moment and read you a statement that the borough prepared with respect to this issue. The borough council appreciates very much those expressing their opinions and thoughts regarding the infestation 
of the invasive species of bees that have been inhabited with the park. Indeed, the infestation has been a vexing issue for the borough for some 20 years now. This is not a new issue. The borough has tried every reasonable, humane effort to discourage these animals from occupying our park. Some have worked temporarily, but none have provided a permanent solution. <coughs> when the park was renovated, our landscape architect designed a riparian buffer for the pond, but the geese ate the plantings multiple times. After very careful consideration and with some reservation, we have opted to have the population of these invasive animals removed by the USDA. Despite hearsay to the contrary, the USDA solution gives the borough the best chance of managing this infestation. The borough, the borough asks everyone to please remember the circumstances regarding our park. The park and its pond are not a natural habitat, but rather a fully man-made development. It is simply too small to support a population of up to 60 geese in a way that is compatible with safe and enjoyable use by our residents. Remediation, member, remediation measures of these creatures is an accepted practice. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has stated that a manageable population of Canadian geese in New Jersey is 41,000, approximately 41,000. The current population of these birds in New Jersey is estimated to exceed 70,000. There is clearly an overpopulation issue which leads to the spread of disease and degradation of the environment. We also recognize that we will need to employ non-lethal deterrents once the, entrenched po once the entrenched population is removed. But first and foremost, the nature of the birds that have inhabited Liberty Park are a safety risk to our community. And this very simply is our concern. Their behavior and excrement are a threat to park users, both human and animal. Further, they affect the water quality in the pond to the extent that the borough needs to treat the water to prevent large algae blooms. It is unfortunate that these birds have chosen the park to make their home. However, their presence is simply incompatible with safety and enjoyment by our residents. I'd like to thank all of you who came tonight to speak to us, both for and against this issue. It is indeed, as I said, a vexing issue, and there is no easy answers. But trust that the, the men and women who set up at this day as, and manage this town will strive to do its absolute best and consider every option in any of its decisions and ideas. So thank you very much. So what we said had no bearing on this. Sorry. I feel there. You're telling us that you're out of order. You're out of order. I'm out of order? You're murdering the residents. You're out of order. Oh, I'm out of the room. Bring your kids to the. You're out of order. Bring your. Show all your kids what you decided to do. Bring them. Bring them to the euthanasia. Thank you all for coming tonight to speak to us. Thank you. <laughs>
Library renovation update. Okay, we're back to the agenda. Okay, uh, last, th last Thursday, uh, you know, Eric, um, Nancy, Carol, give you a shout out, Carol. Uh, and, and, Meg, Meg, and Meg Walters met with the county uh, because our bids came in for the library project and the low bid, the low conforming, the lowest conforming bid was 630000 We have a shortfall of at least $60,000. Thousand uh, dollars to go to go go forward, and, this, and basically, basically the friends have kind of tapped out in terms of the front fundraising efforts until we actually put a shovel in the ground, so to speak, and show that we're making progress. So the recommendation of the property com committee, uh, Eric and my, myself, as well as Jamie, uh, who was last year's property chair, is that we're, we're going to come up with a difference, some way, somehow. I wasn't looking for applause <laughs> because I need, I'm not the one in charge of finding the money. I I did find some money. We found some. We found some. So we are we should be able to move forward. Um, so hopefully we will be setting the awarding the contract at the May 4th. Yeah, I'm sorry, you're competing with the peanut gallery out there. So okay. hopefully we will be. Um, I just have to fine tune a few things, but hopefully we will be awarding it on the May 14th. So we believe we found enough money to at least award the contract. The furniture is still an issue, so we want to work with you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
the very last sentence, a non-union employee who is an active member of both the PPAC Gladstone First Aid and Rescue Squad and the PPAC Gladstone Fire Department shall receive the larger of the stipend. There's only one amount because there's another section. We're only changing that one section. There's another section that reads the amount for the first aid squad. Okay, so that, that's a larger amount. And that's a larger amount. Okay, that's what our, okay. And so we only put in the one section that we Okay, that's what confused me. All right, I got it, makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Roll call, please, Nancy. <clears throat> Councilwoman Murphy. Yes. Councilman Silva. Yes. Councilwoman Sueda. Yes. Council President Sweeney. Aye. Councilwoman Weibel. Aye. Okay, let's go back to Bill A, which is Resolution 89 24 approval of bills. Uh, Nancy, you can uh, first of all, council members, is there any item that you'd like to pull for discussion? Just a quick question. question. Uh, actually, I would like to pull um, this check 1961 to Synthesis Corporation, just the mats. Those are mats that are renewed every couple of years, or is that a contract based? It's a contract base that we have the mats that are all in the hallways and at everything. The entrances for at the entrances and everything all get switched out every two weeks. Doc, that was it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, any other bills uh, to pull or discuss? Seeing none, Nancy, would you give the total amount? One million one hundred and thirty six thousand eight hundred and fifty nine dollars and ninety five cents. I have a motion and second please to approve the resolution for payment. So moved. Second. Roll call, please, Nancy. Councilwoman Murphy? Yes. Councilman Silva? Yes. Councilwoman Sueda? Yes. Council President Sweeney? Aye. Councilwoman Weibel? Aye. Okay, so getting paid. Moving on to council reports um, of the of the <coughs> departments, excuse me, of the chairs listed. Does any council member present have a council report on the uh, Okay, I just have one update on finance. We uh, we have we approve our budget at the May 14th meeting, and, uh, and Eric and I will have a presentation as we do typically every year to pay back at that meeting on our budget. Okay, um, Council, do you have anything for us? I have no report there, thank you. Nancy? I have nothing at this time. Um, so that's it. Moving on. Mayor's executive summary. I only have one item. John, you'll follow up with Brad on the net for yeah. the tennis courts, and you'll advise Eric that a resident of Trust Tennis Courts. Uh, the yeah. You got it? <laughs> Thank you. Very good. That's all I have. Um, now, public comments on agenda items. Does anybody, would anybody like to address the council on an agenda item that we discussed this evening? I'll be there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> you're not allowed to ask about salaries. <laughs> seeing, none, I'll close, seeing none, I'll close the public comments and agenda items. Does any council member have any further business for this evening? Seeing none, we have a motion and second. Dwight, before I ask for this, I'd like to thank our residents who I assume are all in the room and are um, being here tonight. We always appreciate it. So thank you so much. And Jake, me too. <laughs> Doesn't mean he's going to be nice when he writes about us. <laughs> I was hoping. I was hoping. A motion and second to adjourn. So moved. John and Sergio, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The meeting is adjourned. The next regular meeting of the mayor and council will be held on Tuesday, May 14th at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank you again. Oh, it is.